Greetings from the Tour de France. This is James Start with Frankie Andreo for a tour talk after stage five of this year's tour. Uh, long sprint stage from Rouen to uh, Saint-Quentin. But it started off with some fireworks this morning. I mean, a big scrum around everybody, of course. Uh, four riders named in the Lance Armstrong investigation. And both James and I were involved in the SCA case, and uh, we decided that uh, maybe not the greatest for us to comment on the investigation at this point, so we're going to pass it on to the other experts to be able to give uh, their opinion. You can look at uh, other commentary or, or sto uh, stories on bicycling or our many other friends in the press for that. Lots of friends in the press for that. But today, the bike race, a great finish, uh, super exciting. The, the start, not so exciting again, but at the end, the Kofidis rider, what was his name? Hazelink. Is the way Doesn't they sound say it. French to me. No, man, that guy was <laughs> Belgian, and what a dig he put in at the finish to try to get up there to win. So it was a great. Last two years he was doing HTC, and as an under-23 rider, he was actually a really big talent. But being on such a large team, kind of got squandered a little bit or flattened out. But a nice dig at the end of his first Tour de France. But in the end, he didn't win, did he? No, I bet I got you know that. That's what kind of made the stage today because I mean, when the first break went off at kilometer 0. 0.5, I think it was. You know, after three kilometers, they had a minute 35 gap already I was like okay here we go again and then they almost held it so they you know they they really took their chance and made the most of it I thought they were going to hold off to the end 200 meters to go they caught him I thought they had a great chance to hold up but Greipel Agostad he started from the front like he said he wanted to almost made it but he just ran out of legs as you could see it Greipel came by him a fantastic win stage number two for him but a really great sprint by JJ Hayato to get in there at third and Cavendish not bad at fifth considering he almost you know broke his head off yesterday and came back and did a good sprint. Better but than you expected. Much better than expected. But the story also is Sagan. Because he crashed, didn't get any points. So now he's, he was running away with the green jersey. Now there's only like an 18-point difference. And two years ago, Cav had one bad day when he crashed and he lost it. the green jersey. It really comes down. It's amazing ago, Robbie, amazing how close it comes down to. Yeah. Yep. What I really loved was like just watching the lead-out trains about starting about 15K out, 20K out, 10K out. And you had like... You had the Sky Train going up this side of the road. You had BMC going up this side. Up the middle, you had I forget who it was. Lamprey was working for Pataki, and then all of a sudden, Radio Shack goes to, yeah. to get to get Fabian Cancellara up there. All of a sudden, you got four lead-out trains just drag racing into yeah. Saint Quentin. It was crazy. And then what happens? Crashes. And I was I remember looking at that, going, you know. Sagan doesn't really have much help here. He was always right there behind these four lead-out trains, but he was kind of all alone. And he was one of the guys that paid for it today. He went down. No, he did. And, you know, Tyler Farah, I mean, talk about bad luck. It's got to be so discouraging to keep falling down three days in a row, to put all that effort, all that fight, to get no payback at all. And he was, he was upset. At the end, by the buses, he went over to Argo Shimano, was screaming at Tom Velas from Argo Shimano, tried to get on the bus, got pushed off, thrown back to, you know, go back to your side over there. Uh, Tyler extremely upset and so he's just I can't imagine the frustration uh, that he's feeling another uh, Argo Shimano rider that's out is Kittle he Your didn't boy. finish the stomach problems finally got the best of him so so he's out and so uh, you know it's a bit of, a bit of some changes there yeah for sure for sure the the you know, and sprinters like you're saying with Ferrari you know I mean sprinters are so emotional he works so much on morale and he's just been taking a hit from the the starts so you know we hope that, uh, that Tyler can get it back together. They're also up and down. They know the next day is a new day. They got, can come he back. has one more day, really. I mean, one more flat stage, which is tomorrow coming up, and then all the sprinters are going to have to go for it. After that, we go to the, the climb of the pretty girls. And, and, and <laughs> so tomorrow, a lot of the GC guys are actually going to take it easy because they're thinking David. about the climb of the pretty girls. What's the correct name for that? La planche des belles filles. Yeah, I like the pretty girl climb. It sounds better. <laughs> it does sound so, good. One, one other is note I want to say. I like, I, I, there better be pretty girls up there. But one other note, which I think is, uh, was sad, is that there was a professional cyclist, Rob Gorris, working for Belgian TV here, and he passed away last night. So our condolences to the friends family of Rob Gorris. He was here yesterday. He was here yesterday working. And what is a shameful is that ASO would not give a moment of silence on the line to this professional rider that was working here at the tour. Many of these people are here for many years. If you're here at the tour, you're part of the tour family. And I see no reason at all why we couldn't have done a moment of silence for him to for pay sure. our respects. For sure. Tomorrow, more of the same. Um, one more sprint stage, the last sprint stage. 207.5K from Epernay to Metz, yeah. uh, classic sprint stage. What's, what's going to happen? What are we looking at? Well, here? the uphill finish kind of played tricky into this, yeah. so Greipel is on fire. Um, I, I was surprised that it you, was him today. You know, when, I, when we came in and saw that finish, 
I was like, that's looking more like Goss or maybe Boas and Hagen Goss. or something. And he just motored. No, I, the, the, what I saw from Greipel today is unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, fine, not dead flat downhill Cavendish, but Goss is not going to beat him. Greipel is on fire. I'm going with Greipel for tomorrow. I had Greipel today. So who are you going for Greipel. tomorrow? I've been picking Greipel. Are you yeah. going to take Greipel? Well, then I'll take Cavendish. I can always switch. But the green jersey is what's really on the line because then we go into the mountains and time trials and all these guys don't get points. So uh, they can't make a mistake tomorrow. If they lose out, they're going to be completely out of the running for the green jersey. It's going to get exciting sooner than later now. I hope. <laughs> From the Tour de France, this is James Start with Frank Andreo for Tour Talk.